Okay, one wish you feeling better than Mr. Richter. Okay, once again, Chav Beit Amaralaf. This is the Gemara about Chanukah, or this is of the Gemara about Chanukah, and we've done some of them, a little bit of them, and we're really doing a, a good chunk of the Gemara's coming up this week, next week, the week after. Just, just getting going, Jonathan. And um, as you know, there is no Mishnayot about Hanukkah, and it falls, the, the Mishnayot are not there, but this gets into Bamem and Likim because it talks about, of course, wicks and candles for Shabbos, and then we end up in talking about for Hanukkah. Okay. But this is the primary, the primary Gemara. Amar Rabbah. Rabbah said, Ner Hanukkah, mitzvah l'neach betefach hasmucha lepetach. Did we do this? Mm, well, you weren't here, I know that. We may have actually may have done this. I don't think so. We just may have ran through. Okay, so the mitzvah, the near Hanukkah, the mitzvah is to put the tefach next to the door. In other words, you light it. Where do you light it? You light it outside. That's the preferred place. And there's also many people, some people still do. We don't do this so much in diaspora. The hechamanach land, where do you put it? Which side of the door do you put it? So, Ravacha um, the Rav Amar Miyamin on the right, and Rav Shmuel ben Difni Amar Mi Small. Rav Shmuel ben Difni says you put it on the left side. Um, and the Hilchasan Halacha is many sometimes we don't have what the Halacha stated here. The Halacha stated clearly. Halacha is Ms. Small on the left side. Can they near Hanukkah Ms. Small and Mezuzah Miyamin? The near Hanukkah will be on the left side. Left when, side going in. Left side going in, thank you. The left side went facing towards the door, and the Mezuzah is on the right side as you face from the outside towards the door. Which, by the way, halachically, if you were living in such a small house that there was not a mezuzah, or you, or maybe you just moved into the house, you didn't have to so put the mezuzah up, you because you have up to like the 30 days, or you're renting or something like that, or let's say you're staying in a hotel. So, well, it may not be a good example of lighting. No, you're staying in a, you're staying in an Airbnb, okay? <laughs> so you don't have a mezuzah. So Allah is actually, if you were to light outside, you would put it on the right side. The only reason you put it on the left side is because you have mezuzah on the right side, you want to be surrounded by mitzvot. Okay, it doesn't that question doesn't come up that frequently, but you see the one is related to the other. Okay, somehow they feel the right side is you know right is right is strong, right is important, right is significant. Precedence to the right. Correct. Yeah. Right. I'm. Uh, I, I think I asked. I think I asked. Try to ask. Why I don't get an answer? Where's the default in building code? You should have the door on the right side or left side, or just there is no. What do you mean? How do you have the the, nor, the, door the knob? knob on the right because the person's right handed. Most people are right handed. So the door knob is on the right. Is you that true? With, but the question is, is it think. open in or is it open out? No, no. It's, it's, oh. It's so if it's in, it's on the left side. Okay, so if it opens going in, in, going, no, 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 it's on the left in. side. It depends going if you're going, in. depends going if you're going in. in or going out. <laughs> I don't know. Going there it's on the right side. Going into the house. Right. Yes, oh, that's you're right. right. So, so, so the left. So my side. house, my door is on the left. So I don't know if this, if I'm, I think we just rambled. It goes in. It has to be on the left. Right. So I believe this. I believe it is more like refrigerated doors that can be ambidextrous, put on either side, depending on how you want to open it. Right. Sure. Correct. So um, it probably has to do more with the way the setup is really. Oh, but yeah, at yeah. any rate, yeah, right. assuming all things being equal, you kind of walk in and you look at the right side, which whatever side that you walk in. Okay. I'm Rav Yehuda, I'm Ravasi. All right. This is a halach. This is a, a little bit of a complicated gemara that talks about in terms of respect for the Ner Hanukkah. You know, when we light the Hanukkah menorah, we light from the shamus, we light one candle, and then we take the shamus and light the second candle. What we don't do is we don't light the shamus doesn't light the first candle, and the first candle light the second candle, right? So this comes from the gemara we're about to do. The question is why not? The question is what um, what do you really what, what how which is more respectful? So let's go through. It's a little bit complicated. It includes Hanukkah. It includes as well um, sukkahs that you you have to treat the noy sukkah, the sukkah decorations with some res- with a deg- degree of respect, which may sometimes translate it into muksa, but it's also biza mitzvah, and also deals with um, with uh, with um, uh, kisui adam. Kisui adam is when you slaughter either a chicken, a fowl, or a wild animal, a chaya. You have to cover the blood. A special mitzvah. Okay, but it's a mitzvah most of you did not do. Okay. <laughs> You have to pour it on the ground. Well, you have to pour it on the ground. It has to pour it onto the dirt, and then the dirt has to cover it. So you use soft dirt to cover it. But it only applies to birds, and it only applies to wild animals. It does not apply to domesticated animals. Um, wonder, why wonder why not? I don't know why not. It's possible it maybe just... I mean, look, this is second-guessing the Torah, trying to second-guess the Torah. It is what it is because the Torah says that when you shech the nof or you shech the archaya, you vichisav be'afar, and leaves out behemah. Um, I don't know 
There are other blood rituals that were done in the base of Mikdash, mm. and most of what took place there were probably behemoths, or whether yes. they were large animals, small animals, or they were ophos as well. But yeah, the, ofo, yeah, right. the ophos had a different kind of process. It wasn't even actually shechita, it was malika, malika yeah. right, which was a different way. They were just on back in the back of the neck with a, with a fingernail and so forth. So I don't know why, but uh, it is a mitzvah. I can say I did it once in my life. I happened to be at a shlachtois, and they were doing chickens, and they said, would you like to do a mitzvah, Kisi Adam? I said, great. Oh, okay. okay. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. So you just do it with your foot? No. Or you've got a shovel or what? No, they what? actually have dirt. They have dirt like sand in a, in a, in a bucket. Or, and then they sh- these are chickens, right? So it's yeah. not so, and they shecht it over, the mud blood goes down, and then you take like a shovel full and shovel, put it on top. All, they cover all the blood or some of the blood? I thought some, some of the blood. Some of the blood, some yeah. of the blood. But all the yeah. chickens for some of the blood for some of the, all the shechitas. Mm-hmm. But oh, there's. Oh, a little bit. Yeah, yes. Oh, because I remember when I was a kid, they used to shecht it and they used to put the chickens in the thing. The blood would run out like a Correct. funnel, a yes. bunch of funnels. Yes. And I remember the goy would come, and or someone would come and take the blood, the goy or somebody. But that's the, that's the blood that would come down after the chicken was shechted. Oh. This is when the chicken is shechted itself. The blood that spurts oh, out okay. at the moment is called dam nefesh. Oh, okay, okay. They, t- they put the chicken upside down so the blood runs out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay? But that, that can go on for a while. Yeah, yeah, no, I remember. So it's, it's not all the blood. You still have to go. You have to do the tray. Well, you have to do the um, salting and the salt and the, and the soaking and so forth for the chickens. Maybe they would take it for animal feed. I don't know what. Of course, it's, fer- it's, it's high protein. It's good fertilizer. It's good fertilizer. Good fertilizer. Good, yes. Okay. The, um, the Gemara says somewhere that in the base of Mikdash they had a drain. Uh, there was always a drain for everything, and as a result, when they would do, they would wash down the floor after for a while, so they would go down the drain. What were they washing off? Many times it was all the blood sack, all the blood, blood ritual. So it would go into the drain, and after a while they'd have to clear it out. Or maybe this was uh, the drain or the foot of the mizbech. I don't recall now. Mm-hmm. And it was like um, it was very rich what was coming out there because of rich in terms of using it for, I guess, fertilizer and so forth and so on. Okay, so uh, let's go back to the Gemara. So Amrav Yehuda Marav. So the three things, I'm, I'm sorry, pointing Amravasi, out there. Th- Amrav right? Yehuda, Amravasi, Amarav, right, or either not Amarav. So there are three things that are going to come up here. Hanukkah candles, Kisri Adam, and Noi Sukkah, the decorations in the Sukkah. They're all very, very different, but they all have a commonality that you have to treat them each with respect in, in different forms, obviously. So I'm Rav Yehuda Marvasi. Let's read again. You cannot count money by the Hanukkah light, by the Hanukkah and the light of the Hanukkah candle. Now, what's wrong with counting money? Okay, what's what will be wrong with counting money? It's, it's, well, you're not supposed to use it. For yeah, you're, you're using the light. You're using the light. Correct. So the um, the Ron and others point out that this is not this is a chiddush here to say they even cannot counting money. Because yeah, well, how much light do you need really to count money? That's so, not the point. Is that the point? The point is that even the point is even such a light use, light use of light. Okay, a simple use of light, which is minimal, is still going to be considered prohibited. In other words, not only you can't read by the light of the Hanukkah Menorah, but even something as simple as counting bills, yeah, or counting, in this case, it's counting coins, really. But if you're using it, you're using it. It doesn't matter how simple Agreed. You are. Okay, so but I'm, I'm just saying the finish is even something that doesn't require a whole lot of intensive light. Okay. Right, you could argue that you can count coins based upon the size of the coins, the weight of the coin, oh, the feel of the okay, coins. <coughs> right, someone put coins in your hand and you, the light's rough, you could probably tell if it's a dime or, an, or a quarter, right? Very easily. So, also the hearts of the monk connect in their Hanukkah, opposite their Hanukkah. Kamrisa Kameh the Shmuel. When um when this, when I when it was said in front of Shmuel, when Ravasi said this in front of Shmuel. Uh, is uh, right. Amalei, he said to me, maybe this was it. Is it Rav? Is this or Rav is taken out? So if it's Rav, it makes sense. He's saying it in front of Shmuel. If Ravasi is saying it, he's a younger person. He's, he's saying it in front of Shmuel. Shmuel is the older scholar. So Amalei, so he said to me, Bechiner Kedusha Yeshba. Does does Ner Hanukkah have Kedusha? It's a rhetorical question. Right. Is there a holiness to the Ner Hanukkah? And of course, you're going to say yes. We ain't lenu Roshus Lishdamesh by him, right? We don't. We can't use it. That is part of what the Kedusha actually is. So that's going to really play out on Chav Bet on Bet when when we go through the piece of the Sugya. But in other words, what what are you what are you using? So I, I can't use something that belongs to Hektish. I can't use something that belongs to Hektish. No, just just a candle. But this is a, this is a can not even a candle. It's a candle light. Right. Right. What actually is candlelight is energy. 
they didn't differentiate energy and matter, but they understood clearly there was nothing tangible that you're really talking about here. So what's wrong with using it? Am I, I'm not taking away from the light. Didn't use it, didn't, didn't reduce it. So um, so that's that's a question. Before the Gemara tries to deal with the question, the Gemara brings a similar kind of case that comes up, and this is Shri Chaz Adam. Maske Flor of Yosef, V'chidam Kedusha Yeshbo. Is there any holiness to the dam of the animal? This is an animal. The animal is just shechted. Right? We've just kind of really... I don't know, we've treated the animal with uh, disrespect, if you will, not really, but we've, we're using it in ways that serves us. We're benefiting from it. Now what happens, the blood that we're going to cover, I mean, we have to treat with a certain amount of respect. Why? Is there kedusha to the blood? This is not the blood of a sacrifice, the blood of, my, of an animal that's about to be eaten. The Tanya, the Pasuk says, V'shafach, um, v'shafach also v'chisol be'alfar. V'shafach has damo v'chisol be'alfar. So it says v'shafach, you're going to spill it, v'chisol, and you're going to cover it. B'ma sh'shafach y'chaser. With whatever you co- shechted the animal with, I'll explain that in a moment, you're going to cover the blood. In other words, well, how did the shechit to go? I know it takes a knife, but the knife is being held by your hand. If you use the hand to shech the animal, you're going to use the hand to cover the blood. Because the blood has to be, the blood has to go into earth and has to be covered by earth. So that's completely enveloped. The blood that you're using from the shechita for kisu adam has to go into the earth completely. So when you do it, and it says shaleich hasen abregel, you shouldn't kick over the um, the dirt with your foot, which is what you would probably think you want to do. Blood, who wants to touch blood? Who wants to get that close? Shalo yehu, shalo yehu mitzvos bezuyos love. So that you, the mitzvah should not be considered despicable and detestable. So therefore, you're doing the mitzvah, so therefore you should do it with your hand. If you thought it was good enough for your hand to be used as a quality um, part of your body that you can control with, with fine motor m- movement, so and it's not something that comes in the dirt, and you're going to shech the animal, use it for kis adam. Shleich ha-sen far Why shleich mitzvah's bezu yasalav? So if that works for for kisu for kisu adam, so the Gemara says in this case hachanami shlo yehu mitzvos bezuyos love that you shouldn't use the actual um, candle light from the menorah in a way that you're using it for a degrading kind of purpose. Money compared to holiness or compared to doing a mitzvah, money is of course degrading. Money is a tool, but the reality is money is very much um, um, physical monetary, um, this world, as opposed to mitzvahs, are more about the spiritual part of ourselves. So, so therefore, what do we see so far? The first premise that comes out here is that there's a concept of not to be do, uh, no, not to bizui mitzvah right. for Neiros Hanukkah. Okay, we haven't come to yet about um, the sense of Kedusha Saner, or Neiros that we can't benefit, we can't use. We're now at a very simple level, which is about bizui mitzvah. Okay, here comes the third of the three. Boy mine, there's a two dots, but there's really it's a continuation of the sugya. Boy mine mi Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi. Mahul is topic minoye sukkah kol shiva. Can you use? Can you use for your, for mundane, regular purposes the decorations that are put up in the sukkah? You put them up for all seven days of sukkos. So Amale, so they asked Rabbi Shimalev and he answered, Amale, Hare Amru, Asula Hartzots Mos Kenegad Ner Chanukah. That we we said you can't you can't count money you can't count money in front of Neros Chanukah. So um, well, it should be the same thing. We're making a tzushdel, an analogy between Neros Chanukah, Kisu Adam, and and Noi Sukkah. Okay, which is which sounds reasonable. The only problem is I'm Rav Yosef. Rav Yosef said, Mari the Abraham, God of Abraham. It's like, oh my goodness gracious, how could you say this? No, how could how could he make how could he make this kind of ridiculous statement? What's so ridiculous about it? Not about the logic, but he's got it backwards. It's like you, it's inverted logic. Tali Tanya, but low Tanya. He's 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 giving you the answer for something that we have a brisa based upon something we don't have a brisa. Do we have a brisa that any kind of source that tells us I cannot um, degrade Neros Hanukkah? No, we only made the analogy to Kisu Adam. Kisu Adam, we have a drasha. Said v'shafach v'chisa. 
Shafach Rukhisa says the same way that I would treat the animal respectfully by shechting it with my hand, my my arm, and the knife, so too I treat it respectfully for Kisu Adam. And therefore I should do the same thing for Chanukah. Mitzvot, lo mitzvot, bezur eslach. So Tali Tanya, he took that which we have a, a, a brisa, which is about Kisu Adam, or which is about, in this case, Noi Sukkah, and he, and he made it dependent upon, but Lo Tanya, something which we don't have a, a, a brisa about. Right. Sukkah Tanya, Chanukah Lo Tanya, we have a brisa about sukkah, which we haven't yet said, but we're about to give it to you, which which Rav Yosef is saying, how come he could say this? There's this clear bar so about about sukkah. What's he asking and explaining about Hanukkah? It should be the other round. Hanukkah could be dependent upon sukkah, not sukkah and Hanukkah. What's the brisa? up? De Tanya, okay, that we learned this following brisa. Sichachab kehilchasab, if you put the schacha properly. Correctly, this is before the Yantav. Vietra be kramim uva sadinim hamatsuyarim. And you decorate it with kramim sadinim or silks. Kramim is also some kind of um, the linens. Yurios shotsvayim. This is kind of colored kinds of curtains. So you put up the sukkah, and around the sukkah edges, you put all kinds of colored curtains. I know we kind of put up, we don't do that today. Maybe you do. Do you? Yes, I've you seen do. this. We put up curtains. Yeah, yeah very nice. Yeah. Inside. Where, where the family Not the whole of the sukkah, but the, uh, like the yeah. head of the table. Sort of. Inside. Yeah, inside. Yeah, inside. Yeah. 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 Ye
though I think that's our, the minhag to go into sukkah is clearly halachic, the better minhag to sit and eat the meals. But those who do not go really come, probably goes back to Russia and Ashkenazi communities or other communities where it was cold. Yeah, it was and it was clear if you went into a sukkah yeah. on, on, in the cold, you were not just simply sitting outside to get the breeze, you were really freezing. <laughs> yeah. okay. So, uh, where, where's. Um, uh, Right. Uh, who were they when well, I was told in Calgary they had a foot and a half of snow in yeah. circus this yeah, year? Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so that's what I'm just saying that that's. that's what, I'm trying to be Malamas Chlis. So where it came from? It came yeah, clearly yeah, comes yeah. from Europe. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So as a result, so that's why the two Menagim are. But the bottom line is, the bottom line is we uh, we in Neret Yisrael, the last day of Sukkos is that in the Sukkah is on 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 Choshana Rabbah. We don't go into the sukkah, mm-hmm. or we don't go into we. I'm sorry. The the try it again. The noy sukkah, the decorations of the sukkah, however, are muksa until when? Not until the end of Hoshana Rabbah in Eretz Yisrael. Forget us in the diaspora. Not just till the end of Hoshana Rabbah. They are going to be considered muksa until after Shmini Atzeres. Well, for us in Chastorah, oh, yeah. but in, in in Israel, it's going to be Shmini Atzeres. Okay. Now, um, that's a, that is, by the way, um, a, a rule. Why would that be? Why would it be till after Simchas Torah or till after Shmini Atzeres? We don't use the sukkah on on on, on Shmini Atzeres in Israel. Israel doesn't use it in Shmini Atzeres. So we have a rule that if something is is Hukzel a mitzvasa and Ben Hashemoshos is Hukzel for the whole yom. Hukzel Ben Hashemoshos is Muksev Ben Hashemoshos is Muksev for the whole day. So now the case here is we have uh, Ben Hashemoshos at the beginning and the end of every of every day. So at the end of Hoshana Rabbah, if you wanted to eat on that Ben Hashemoshos time period, you would go into the sukkah. So the sukkah or the schach of the sukkah is still considered set aside for the sukkah, even in the in the Ben Hashemoshos that leaves the end of Hoshana Rabbah into the beginning of Shemini Atzeres. Am I making sense? So once it's considered, that's the rule. So once it's considered muktzah for that ben hashmashos, it's muktzah for the whole day, oh, even man. if you're in Israel and you don't go into the sukkah and shmini atzeres, but it's knocked off the whole day. The Bayatosis points out this is only about the sukkah, not only about the sukkah. This is not going to be the same halacha for the lulav and esrog. So the lulav and esrog, if you're in, in Eretz Yisrael, are actually not muktzah on um, on shmini atzeres. So if you wanted to use the esrog. For I don't know esrog jelly, esrog juice, or whatever you want to use it for, you <coughs> could on shmini atzeres because you're never really going to use and ben is not a time that you would take the esrog. You only take the esrog when it's really yantif. So and it's no such situ- no such deal that you could possibly be sitting like you're sitting into sukkah in the, into the evening that you're going to take a little of an esrog and ben hashmoshes. I'm sorry. Ben Hashemoshes is, be- is from Shkia until Tzaytzah Kochavim. Until nightfall. Correct. So then the, the deadline for the bracha on Yisroh and Lula is, is gone. Shkia. Right, correct. So therefore, as I'm saying, you and couldn't you take it afterwards, right? Right. So, um, but this is a significant piece of, of time, which in, in the diaspora we would say that Shkia is going to be 40 minutes, more or less, mm-hmm. right? Um, in Eretz Yisrael, it might be shorter. It's closer to the equator. The sun goes down much quicker. If you, you notice, you probably don't notice, but it's it, it's a, it's a much shorter type of twilight. Um, but still, there's a twilight period that we kind of treat it from both sides. That's why Yom Kippur is 25 hours, Shabbos is 25 hours, and so forth. So at any rate, um, as a result, if you put up the schach and you put up the decorations in Erev Sukkot, it is considered you cannot use it for your personal um, use during during the entire holiday of Sukkot, all the way until Motzei Shat, Motzei Yom Tov Achron, Motzei the day after Shemini Atzeres and Eretz Yisrael. And here for us is going to be the one extra day, which is going to be, of course, through Simchas Torah. Um, Lehem. And if you if you put it up conditionally, let's say you decided when you put this up, I'm only going to put this uh, this decoration up for the first day, because mm-hmm. I need that pomegranate for for Cholam Chavis or something. Uh, then I call the feet no. So then, uh, if you were to make a rule and say I'm not really setting aside for all of Yontif, then you could theoretically take it down in the middle when that tonight becomes valid and becomes applicable. Okay. Um, so there. So what does the Gemara say? So we see we have a a brisa that talks about the concept of sukkahs being set aside. 
So, so, so the Rav Yosef's question is: So how come, mm-hmm. how come? Who was it again? Rav Yosef ben Levi was trying to tie Sukkot yeah. into Chanukah. Right. It really should be that Chanukah could be learned from Sukkot because exactly. Sukkot we have a brisa, yeah. and Chanukah we don't have a brisa. So he says you're right. But El Am Rav Yosef, Rav Yosef says Avu and the Kul Hamdam, the real the father of all of these, the origin of all of these of both Sukkot and really Chanukah, which doesn't have its own independent source, is really Shvicha Sadam. And once again, we're coming back at this point to the concept of Bizoy Mitzvah. You can't treat it disrespectfully. So let's just kind of summarize where we are until now, because there are three types of disrespect. For be for Shvicha Sadam, the Bizoy the Bizoy Mitzvah is using your foot. Right. right, that's disrespectful. Um, for Hanukkah candles, the Biza mitzvah is re- is counting money, mm-hmm. right? And for sukkahs, the disrespect here is using, using the, the, branches. the branches or not the branches, using the decorations for your personal benefit and for your personal use. Okay. Tosis points out that with sukkahs there are actually two things here. Tosis points out that there's there are two concepts: bizui mitzvah, and then we have a diff, We have a gemara that in this, in later on Masechet Shabbos that calls that use a term um, calls migo diskatsoi le mitzvah. So it's set aside as a as a as a muksa for the mitzvah itself. So Tosis points out that they're really two separate concepts and they both work for sukkahs. Okay, let me give you an example where the difference is. If schach came down. Um, no, not schach. The decorations came down on yantif of sukkahs. So what do you do with them? The, uh, the schach, the same thing for the schach. The schach came down, you got a real serious problem. Too much half stuff. Half the schach blew off. Well, then you have half a sukkah. But you couldn't, put it back, you couldn't put it back up. No, 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 no. Right, correct. So but I'm can saying, I put it away? Can I put it to the side? Not on yantif, no. On yantif, you just leave it there. Okay, so maybe, it's muksa. Maybe if you, you need the place, if you need the place where you're going to sit, and the schach is there, so you can push it away to okay, okay. okay. But otherwise, if you don't need the place, right? Let's say you blew over and you, I don't know, it's leaning on a tree outside. So it's not a reason why to move the schach. Yeah, so, but but the same thing would apply to decorations. It happens every year when it rains, right? The decorations get fafienzel. They come down. They're on the <coughs> bottom. You're stepping on them. So really, on yant if they're muksa, right? So it's but now on chalamoed. There's really no concept of muksa and chalamoid, right. right? So we kind of, kind of, we tend to kind of mush them both together. But really, for chalamoid, it's real bizui mitzvah. So the, I mean, it's bizui mitzvah. Bizoy the whole, it back, it's bizui for me to use it for myself. Ah, to use it. But for example, if it fell off on chalamoid sukkah, I could put it aside. I cannot. I, I could. I could rehang it. I was going to say, put it back. Yeah. Right, but for example, I couldn't say, well, I put up this nice decoration and now it fell off. I may as well use it. I put an apple up. I put an apple up and the apple came down. I may as well eat it before it goes bad. No, I could hang it up on chalamoid. I can't touch it on on yontif, but I I'm it's set aside for a special mitzvah. And use it for anything else is bizo mitzvah. So Tosus points out there are really two parts, two things on sukkahs, which so we sometimes confuse them. But they're really dif- distinct and different, and play them plays what well, plays it plays out in different ways on chalamoid vis-a-vis on terms of yantiv itself. So, right. So that's the, that's the um, that's the second toast, the third toast on the page. May I just read quickly? Sukkah Tanya Mashma, the time of the noy sukkah mishum bizu mitzvah says Tosa. So from our Gemara, it looks like the reason for the noy sukkah is because of bizu mitzvah. Akash l'ri perakira. This is mem hey lovel later. Mashma, the time of mishum migo diskatsoy l'mitzvah. Diskatsoy is in the word of muksa. It's muksa l'mitzvah. So there's different kinds of muksa on Shabbos and Yantav. One is muksa l'mitzvah. So hooks l'mitzvah. So the teirutz and the reese. The reese gives an answer. Or Tosa gives an answer. That trichla tavayu. That we need. If it was simply muksa, you can not have a muksa kansim chalamoid. You have restrictions about some certain work, but there's no muksa. Lo shach muksa ella b'shabas v'yantov. Umishum bizo mitzvah lo have esrin on lahu hecha denaflo. And we wouldn't say it's a bizo mitzvah if it simply fell off. Have a hashda de amrian diskatsoi with bizo mitzvah esrin on fil naflo of a fil b'chalamoid. Now when we have both, so if it fell off on chalamoid, you can't use it because of bizo mitzvah. You can't use the iskatsoi really because because of the yantiv that runs for the entire the entire seven days. Okay, so that's um, that's just in terms of a little bit of side part in terms of what's going on there. So once again, we got the three things. Okay, so we haven't gotten really to the key value about not using Hanukkah lights yet. Well, or we haven't gotten really to using the lights physically, deteriorating the light. What we've t- what we said so far is you cannot read by the light. 
Right? You can't read by the light because that would be considered Bezo and Mitzvah. Bezo mitzvah. Okay, what would happen if you're reading Torah? Would that be Bezo and Mitzvah? <coughs> Interesting question. Okay, I don't know. I'm not sure. I'm sure it's discussed somewhere. I'll try to look it up. Okay, so Itmar. So now we're going to come to something a little more invasive on the on the Hanukkah candle. Until now, we were using the candle. We were not really touching the candle. What about taking a candle and using that light for something else? Using actually the wick for something else. What about lighting a, a candle from a candle to a candle? Right? This happens sometimes. Shabbos, maybe you, <coughs> you or your wife light the Shabbos candles. The match isn't going to last for all candles. You light one, and then you kind of move around from one to the other. Nothing wrong with that. There's no kedusha about the Shabbos candles. We can't move Shabbos candles and Shabbos because they're muksa, but we read by them, we use them, we we um, we um, we benefit from them. So the, what about Hanukkah candles? Itmar. No. Correct. With shalom bayis, correct. The shalom bayis. Correct. So I'm saying the purpose of Hanukkah candles is shalom bayis. Person, the purpose of Shabbos. There you go. Purpose of everything is shalom bayis. Purpose of purpose of Shabbos candles is shalom bayis. You have to work as shalom bayis, right? Okay. Remember the tape is running. Be very careful what you say. Okay. So, um, but but the, the purpose of the Shabbos candles is shalom bayis, and the purpose of the Hanukkah candles is what would you say it is? Their mitzvah, persuminisa, right, persuminisa. But there's a certain kedusha that goes to the candles. Remember, it's reminding us of the candles in the neiros and the base of mikdash, which has a certain degree of kedusha. They were holy and sanctified. Okay. So all I'm just pointing out is we're moving now from using candles to actually using the light of candles to actually using the wick and some of the matter, some of the physical matter, as opposed to using the light energy that was coming off of the candle. Itmar. Rav Omar, ein madlikim in there l'ner, u'shmol Omar madlikin. Okay, let's stay with this, burn this in our brain, because it's going to come up and it's a little complicated. Rav says, you cannot light from candle to candle on Hanukkah. It doesn't actually, you wouldn't know what it's talking about, but it's talking about Hanukkah. But Shmuel says, Madlikin, you can light from one candle to another. So in other words, what does that mean? So if I lit one candle, I can take the first Hanukkah candle, let's say it's the second out of Hanukkah, I lit the first candle, I can use that now to light the second. Who says that? Rob. Shmuel. Shmuel Trick, okay. Yeah. Shmuel said it. Rob says you can't do it. Okay, another another similar machloket. Ein matirin tzitzis mi beged le beged. Okay, Ushmol, who said the Rav said that? Ushmol amar matirin mi beged le beged. Okay, and the second thing is this is something that is um, would be very difficult for you to try successfully, and that is to use the tzitzis from one beged to tie onto a second beged. They get, they get, uh, they get coiled. You know how to uncoil them? You yeah. probably expose them to the steam and heat. No, no. You make them wet. You draw them on a piece of wood, you staple both ends, and then when they dry, they dry straight. There we go. Okay. Oh, that's, um, there's so. more trouble than it's but if you make them wet, <laughs> stretch them, and when they dry, they're straight. Oh, okay. They're um, yeah. and there you go. I don't know. I, I was a young kid. I tried it once. No, it doesn't. But if you make it it's, wet, do it. I, I tried it once, said I would never do it again. It. Okay. <laughs> so, um, so once again, this looks here to be now. What what would be the problem of doing this? What could be wrong yeah, about what, taking what the tits off from one bag into another? So you're you're depreciating the the bag the first bag by putting the tits from one to the other. For us, this sounds like so so like so minor, right? I forget it's the Chai Adam. That talks about um, if you have um, a beggar that you cannot use, and talks about recycling the tzitzis onto another beggar. The right, beggar gets one out. Rips, the tzitzis are still good. Right, tzitzis are still good. So he actually talks about it's one of the probably earliest sources about recycling in environment. Um, I guess you have to think back to those days that it was probably very expensive to make tzitzis. Oh. Everything was was different. Everything expensive. Correct. And, and, and so what so, you say? You could do it? You so I figured he says, it's a machlok is him in the mission Bura later on. So I think he says you actually should try to use the tzitzis again because the baguette is gone. Yeah. I think so. I don't remember now. It's one or the other. Garbage, it's higher oh, it's right. it's right. Now, by the way, by the way, just in terms of tzitzis, do tzitzis have to go into Shamos? No. No, why not? 
What? I'm sorry. You just get wrapped up. You wrapped up, put them in the garbage. Correct. So the answer is there. There. Well, everybody knows shameless. So much goes into shameless these days. So, um, but there's something called tashmishe kedusha and tashmishe mitzvah. Tashmishe kedusha is something like tefillin. It's tashmishe kedusha, and possibly even something that serves tefillin, like possibly a tefillin box. Maybe it's Mish Tashmish um, Kedusha, Sefer Torah, parts of the Sefer Torah. That's something of holiness. It's serving yeah, something of holiness. Shame is Hashem's name. Yes, yes. So that. Shame. But I'm saying, Shame. but even something, even something that services the idea of Kedusha. So something like, for example, the, the bag, the, 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 not, not as much probably the bag as much as the the boxes, the, the boxes batim, the, the box. The, 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 yeah, oh, yes, that's okay. Tashmish Kedusha. Because the tefillin are dar of Darvish Kedusha. However, something that sits is called Tashmishe Mitzvah. So Tashmishe Mitzvah does not have to go into Shemos, okay? Yes. I'm talking about the plastic covering around the tefillin. I, it's called Tashmishe Kedusha. I believe it's called Tashmishe Kedusha. I don't know. I think it's Tashmishe Kedusha. I think it's Tashmishe Kedusha. I'll double check, okay? Quite sure. But um, um, as a matter of fact, I, um, I'm quite sure it does, because we're really not supposed to lean on them. So sometimes many people, including yours truly, when he's not thinking, put, the put the sitter on them. That's oh, really not proper. It's not a proper use of something that's a Tashmisha Kedusha. Oh. So it's not Tashmisha Kedusha, the button itself? I think it's a Dover Shiva Kedusha. That's a Dover Shiva Kedusha. really the... The Kedusha right. is, the, is, the, is what you call the, the cloth. Yeah, I, mean, I think the whole tefillin is really the okay, Shiva okay. Kedusha. I think people take the plastic boxes, some sforim, some sidurim, unless you hold it down, the binding is such that it will close by itself. Right. Mm-hmm. So they put the well, that's box That's so clever. That's so clever. Never, uh, clever. Never saw that. So such a clever idea. Well, I'm not sure it's a good idea. Okay. Put yourself. Take a different But I, uh, I, I recall, in fact, I recall that I don't recall if Rabbi if Rabbi Karupkin said it or it was written in one of the Bayit bulletins by Rabbi Torchiner about not putting your sitter on top of the tefillin plastic boxes. Mm-hmm. Okay, so I, I have a distinct recollection because when I read it, I said, oh, well, it's good to read it. Okay, good to hear. Well, maybe not good to hear. Okay. So it does make sense, but it's such a handy kind of uh, book rest. Okay. Um, anyways, back here at the case. So Matlikim and Nerl. So this is about Nerd Nerd. Next one is about Sitzis. But Sitzis me begged the begged. Machlok is Rav and Shmuel in both these cases. And the third, the third of the three things, this is unrelated. Rav Amar ain't halachin Rabbi Shimon begreiro. Shmuel Mar halachin Rabbi Shimon begreiro. This is completely off topic. Greiro is about um, pulling something um, on Shabbos on on the ground, like you pull a couch, you pull lawn chairs on the ground. What's going to happen? So it's called. You don't really want to make the chritz, uh, the, the, the thing, so it's the, but it does. So there's a machlokas between Rav and Shmuel. Uh, is this considered a tolda, an extension of choresh, of making a, um, a digging a ditch, which is like plowing, or if it's in the house, and don't try this in your house, is it going to be considered like bona? Because back in the day of the Mishnah and the Gemara, they did not have st- tiled or wooden floors. They had dirt sure. floors. So one of the things that they would want to do is they would want to smooth out the floor every once in a while to make it equal. As you kind of kicked up the dirt and, and, and picked, you know, made gouges yeah, in the ground. Nice. So therefore you'd want to, so it, would, it could be either if it's high or low, so they would all, that's considered. So in a house, digging a ditch is going to be considered bona. In a, in a field, it would be considered choresh. And this is something that you don't intend to do. So, um, so do so. The question is, who do we paskin like? So, um, and by the way, well, you see in a moment who we paskin like. So, so, so what do we say? So, I lost the line. So, I'm Rabbi. Um, I'm sorry, I skipped. Yeah, went to. I'm Rabbi. Call me the Demar of it Karav. Everything that um, that Rabbi Bar Nachmani did. He's talking about Rav Uh He did uh, did according to Rav Levar Mihani Tlas David Kishmuel, except for the following three cases that we just learned about, which he followed. We followed Shmuel, which is Madlikim in there and there. He did allow. In other words, even though Rav said you can't, he did light from candle to candle. Matir mi begad lebegad. You could undo the tzitzis and Allah Rav Shimon begreira. We do follow Allah Rav Shimon begreira. The Tanya Rav Shimon Omer. Here's the case. Gorer Adam Mita Kisei Vesafsel Vavoshli Skavin Lasel Charitz, and you provide 
decided you don't in, you don't intend to make a charetz. By the way, we have a rule that impacts upon this machloket that even if you were to follow Rabbi Shimon, the davashin of is considered mutter. It's not mutter if it's what's called a psik resha. Psik resha is. It, it's inevitable to happen, right? You chop off the head of the chicken is when the chicken's going to die. You can't say, I wanted to chop off the head of the chicken, I didn't want to kill the chicken. It's called psik reishi v'lo yomos. If I chop off the head of the chicken, it's not going to die. It's a rhetorical question. So therefore, if I have such a heavy bench that I pull it across the, the ground in my backyard, it's oh, going right, to yeah. dig up the grass, or it's going to make a ditch, it's going to make an indentation. That is us, sir, even if we were to pass like Rabbi Shimon, the Rabbi Shimon Muscovy is mutter. Okay. But if you have something that's not a psig ratio, so we can pass like Rabbi Shimon in this case. Yeah, but right here, so back again, let's get back to the Madliki. Right? Well, we're going to get back to the Madliki right immediately. Oh, okay. okay, we just mentioned these three things together. Yeah, but even in these three, do we have a conclusion or we don't? About, let's talk about the Madliki from one to the other. Well, the, the, or the we're, yeah. So um, I, I'm... I believe, that, well, first of all, I know the halakha is like Rabbi Shimon for Greira, except that the only exception is if it's Psik Reishad Lo Yamus. I believe that we pass in like Shmuel, so we pass in like Shmuel. Um, we pass in like Shmuel as well, Mater and Mibeged Lebeged. Okay, and the discussion about Ner Lanir is going to be complicated by what follows afterwards, because okay. that's the topic we're bringing down. Okay, so let's go back and let's go to the Hanukkah story. So, so far, this is the, you want to guess you can put a period here for a moment. Now, Yosef HaUmi Rabban and Kamei the Rav Ad Barahava, Yosef HaKamar and Bekamar, and there was a, a student who sat in front of Rav Ad Barahava, and he said the following thing, Time of the Rav, Mishum Bizo Mitzvah. So here's the connection to the previous piece of Gemara. The reason why Rav says that you cannot, that you cannot, um, light from one to the other. you cannot light from one to the other is because it's a Bizo Mitzvah. Okay, um, now what would be the Bizo Mitzvah? Why would that be considered bizu mitzvah? Taking out some of the light of the, of the candle. Well, I'm using that light for another light. So Rashi explains. Rashi explains. So Rashi explains. Being dimmed when you're when you're taking that light and lighting another light. Yeah, but they're both going to be Hanukkah candles. So what if I take the first Hanukkah light and I light to the second Hanukkah light? So there's a, there's one there's what Rashi explains, and this is how you have to understand the Gemara that we're talking about here. Where how did you take the light off the first candle? Not like yeah, like I, I presented it to. I take the candle and I light it over. Let's go back to the candles they probably had in the days of the mission and the Gemara and these rices. What kind of candles were they? They were oil. Wicks, yeah. They were they were oil menorahs. So how would I light from one to the other? I can't really tip it. What would I take? I would take a wood chip. Like you would take a match. You would take a match, or you would take some some piece of uh, flammable in, in, in type of uh, um, piece of paper or something. You'd take the light from one and light to the other. So that is the case where you would consider it to be bizu mitzvah. You're taking Rashi says this is uh, towards about the six lines from the bottom of the Rashi, seven lines. Time of the Rav, mineil and there mishum bizu mitzvah shematli kisam kisam is a wood chip, small wood chip. Sheinam in a mitzvah mineir shal mitzvah. You're taking this wood chip and you're taking the light from the first candle or first bowl of oil and you're lighting into the second one. So you're using something as an intermediary which is not the the sanctity level of the Hanukkah menorah candle itself. Now what we do, by the way, with the shamas, we take the shamas and we, we, we light the menorah. We're not taking away from that light. Right? We're actually taking the, we're adding, we're making the light work. You couldn't do the reverse. You couldn't take the Hanukkah menorah light and then light a, a, a match from it. Okay, does that make sense? How is it so, so Bizoy, as you've seen in the, until now, Bizoy mitzvah varies. Like with the easiest one for us to understand about Bizoy mitzvah is the Shrikh Adam. Is why I don't take my foot. So everybody says, take kicking the blood with your foot is clearly much more disrespectful than taking my hand. Both of them aren't really great things to do. It's not, not like, you know, this is the highlight of the day, unless you're a shaykh, I suppose. Okay. <laughs> so on the other hand, on the other hand, if I'm reading, reading by the light of a menorah, I'm counting money by the light of a menorah, how is that bizu mitzvah? What have I really done? I haven't really taken anything away from the light. 
So the answer is that itself is denigrating. The light is being used. The light energy is being used for a purpose that's not holy. It's a, 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 a notch down or a half a notch or a drop of a notch. And then the third one is a sukkah. So what happens? If I put the apple up there, why is it a bisa mitzvah for me to eat it? I'm benefiting. The answer was I put it aside and I'm only using it for that mitzvah. So some of these bisa mitzvahs, that's what I'm saying, that's why I tried to explain, they're very different. Mm -hmm. They're equated. They all go back They all go back to Kisi Adam. Kisi Adam is the clearest one of bisa mitzvah. Mm -hmm. We all get that. To make the analogy to sukkah, make the analogy to Hanukkah is a bit of a stretch. But they all are notches down. Except they each have to. The, except the the dam one is more clearly, really physically a put down. The others really relate to the sanctity of the event or the object that is being used for sukkahs and especially for Hanukkah. Okay, so so the point of it being, and this let's just kind of underscore this because this is going to come back to play out on Ahmed Bet. The idea of taking a Hanukkah candle and taking it to a wood chip and a wood chip to a third to a second candle, the wood chip, candle to wood chip is going to be Bizu Mitzvah according to the way the Gemara, according to this rabbi, this this Talmud who sat in front of Ravada Brahava and said, Time of the Rav Mishum Bizu Mitzvah. Now, you maybe you don't like that. So Rav doesn't like that, and guess what? So Ravada Brahava didn't like it either. Okay? So Amalahu, so Ravad Barhava said to this unnamed uh, Talmud Chacham, Hahumi Rabbanam, who doesn't have a name because he obviously wasn't one of the big guys, so to speak. So Dlota Tzisule, he said, don't listen to him. Don't pay attention. Pay no attention to that little man who's pulling the, the pulling the widows of the vase. Pay no attention to what he said. In other words, he's wrong. I guess there were other people sitting around Ravad the Barhava. Time of the Rav, Mishum the Komachesh B'mitzvah. The reason for Rav that says you cannot use the wood chip in the middle, right, is that you are decreasing, you're weakening the mitzvah itself. So it looks like you are taking the wick and you are taking some of the wick and light and taking it to another candle. Now, this may not have to deal with a wood chip in the middle or not a wood chip in the middle. So all of us are trying to sh shake or scratch our heads and say, what are we really weakening? So I, I'm not sure how to explain it except to say that the aggregate total of the light will become less. As, I, as you can see in your mind, perhaps, um, if I lit from one, let's take a paraffin candle. I lit from a paraffin candle to another candle, I'm probably going to use some of that light energy to, will be wasted on the second candle, getting the second candle to, to go on, on its, its, um, its um, energy, right? It's, it's, its reaction, right? It's, it's, it's light reaction. So at the end of the day, I've now taken a candle that could burn for 30 minutes, and maybe it's now going to burn for 29 minutes and 50 seconds. 29 minutes and 30 seconds. It's not perceptible, right? right? But you can see where it can become deteriorated. That's what it means, the chushi mitzvah. You've now you've made it a little bit weaker. So and um, and so there are two reasons here for Rav. So we've we've gone from the beginning of the Gemara, which we started with today, which talks about Biza and mitzvah, and now we said there are two possible reasons why Rav says you can't light from candle to candle. One is because of Biza and mitzvah, and the second reason, which we're now presenting, Baravad Bahava, is about Machish mitzvah. My Benai, who what's the difference between the two? Iku Benai the Komadlik Mishraga Lishraga. If I light directly from one candle to another candle, talk about a paraffin candle, or talk about a candle that you are close enough that the wicks can touch, as you have long wicks, I don't have an intermediary. Man di amar misham biza mitzvah, mishraga lashraga madlik. If you say the reason is biza mitzvah to take from candle one to candle two, there's no biza mitzvah, they're both equal. I'm just taking the holiness of one candle and making the going to the holiness of the second candle, they're equals. And man shraga nami asr. The person says I'm I'm weakening it, it's not only going to be asr if I go from a wood ship, it's going to be even asr if I light one candle to the other. Okay? So far so good? Mm -hmm. This is the easy part of the sugya. Okay? <laughs> So the rest is not that hard, but this is just this is pretty simple. So, you, so keep in mind the two ideas: Bizu Mitzvah, which was said in this Gemara by the Hahu Mirabanan, right, the scholar we have no name for, and then Ravada Barhavu said the reason really is because of Machish Mitzvah, Achoshes Mitzvah. Good. Okay, Masiv Ravavaya. So we uh, Ravavaya asks a question from the following system source, which deals with um, slayim of Maisa Shani. If you have Maisa Shani and you are going to bring your, you can't bring your produce to Yerushalayim, too heavy, too far, or even, you, right, so what do you do? You pod it 
onto an equivalent value for what the what, what the produce is, and then you come to your shlaim and then you take that 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 coin, and then you pour, you change it back into food. There might have been as you get to your shlaim, you may need to move it in from a larger coin to smaller coins and so forth and so on. So what do you have here? You have let's see if I remember this case here. You have dinarim, you have uh, coins that you took Maishasheni and you transferred the Kedusha of Maishasheni from the original produce onto the coin. Mm-hmm. Now, you want to take now, we want to, you want to be sure you have two other coins that have nothing to do with Maishasheni, but you want to be sure that those coins are also proper in their weight. The, the value of coinage in the days, in the olden days, was of course based upon weight. Correct. Um, yeah. Right. Well, if you were, what's the term for chipping coins? Um, chiseler. Chiseler. If you were a chiseler, that's what you did. You chiseled off the edges of the coin to make a little bit of gold dust for yourself. That's why the coins have the the rubbing on the mm-hmm. edges. Right. What is it called? It's not called rubbing. It's called um, well, milling. The milling. Yeah. Well, not milling. Okay. Whatever. Knurling. <laughs> Nerling, Nerling. call them Nerling. There you go. So that made sure that made sure that you didn't scratch off the edges of the coin, okay? Because you could see if you scratched off the Caesar's face, you could tell it didn't look like the Caesar. So you scratched around the edges, you couldn't tell what it was. So you want you now you have this coin. You have two coins, let's say that are Maishasheni coins, two dinarim, and now you have you have two other dinarim that you want to really kind of make sure that they're equal. So what do you do? You put them on a scale. Hopefully they're going to match up, right? So, um, so the Mishnah says in Maishasheni, uh, as follows: Sela shal Maishasheni, ein shoklim konegdo din zahav. So I, I don't weigh against them the dinarim of gold um, that I'm that I have one to the other. I can't take non Maishasheni coins and weigh them against the Maishasheni coins to see if they're really going to be true weight. Vafila lechalel alav Maishasheni, and even if I'm going to now desanctify Maishasheni. Uh, even if I'm going to desanctify this Maishasheni onto another coin. So in other words, I want to use the other coins. I want to see the really true weight because I have other Maishasheni that I want to decant or to take the Kedush onto the other coins. So in other words, it does have some holy purpose. So, But, it, but you, you get the feeling what could be wrong between doing this. I'm taking holy coins and matching up against... Right. Non-holy coins. So I'm now. I'm. I'm here. Here it comes now. I'm de-sanctifying or using for a secular purpose the holy coins to find out these regular mundane coins are going to be true weight or not. So that's the that's the Mishnah that has nothing to do with Hanukkah, has nothing to do with Kisha Adam, has nothing to do with Sukkah. Holy for uh, non-holy correct. Purpose. Now, so that's once again that's easy. Now here comes the here comes the hard part. You'll help me out in case I in case I fall back. So so e amrit b'shlama kipligi ravishmo minel in there. That if we said that the machlokas according to Rav and Shmuel is about from candle to candle, and that's what they're arguing about. Avo bekisma asa Shmuel. But if you were to use an intermediary, even Shmuel would say it's going to be prohibited. So so um, so halo tehave tiyufta. So that's not going to be a problem. Let's see if I can go through Rashi and, and remind myself how this goes. So um, when Shmuel says that it's permissible to go from there to there. The only reason he's saying is because of Ikhushay Mitzvah. Because you're weakening it when I go from candle to candle. If I use a kinsa, the, which is a is a is this piece of wood, the, which is a Bizoyan Mitzvah, so even Shmuel would say that I can't do that. The whole Machlokas is only going from candle to candle. So in such a case, it's not going to be a problem in the case of, it's, it's going to work out well for the case of the Maestro Shani coins, because, let's see how this goes now. The Dinarim of Chulin are not Mitzvah coins, and even though they're helping the Mitzvah coin of Maestro Shani, but it's still considered a chushe mitzvah. So I understand this would be, so this would follow the opinion of Shmuel, I think, probably opinion of Shmuel that says I can't do it, because I can't even do it from candle to candle, I can't do it from my sashani coin to the other coin itself. But if I say, Okay, but if I say that the machlokas about Shmuel and Rav is not really about candle to candle, but it's about using um, 
using the chip that Shmuel says it's fine. Um, why can I use the chip even though I'm using an intermediary? What would be the Svar of Shmuel? Because it's a it's a tzorach of the mitzvah. So why can I not use the Maishashani coin, the other coin, to work with the Maishashani coin? It's also going to be a tzorach mitzvah. I think I got most of that across. Okay, so in other words, if I say the purpose is really about weakening it, using anything for non kodesh purpose, I'm going to detract from it. So I understand that seems to work into the prohibition of using one coin to the other. If I say, on the other hand, the issue is going to be about, um, that Shmuel would even say taking a kins on the middle is going to be permissible. Why? Because not like Rav says, I'm going from a bizui mitzvah, but Rav Shmuel will say it's a bizui mitzvah, but it's a tzorach mitzvah. So then why would why would it be wrong according to anyone to take from the Meiser Shani coin and weigh it against the Diner Zahav? Okay, it's, that's about as good as I can come up with. I don't think, in my mind, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a perfect question. So, so, um, so, Hatavi Tiyufta. So the Gemara says, Amarabba, the reason is completely unrelated. The real issue is not about using something that's holy for something that's not holy, desanctifying it. It's a completely different problem. The issue is even if you were to allow, as Shmuel does, to go from candle to kinsa, to, to go back to candle, in this case you can't do it because what are we afraid of? We're afraid that you may kind of find out that the, the, the coins are not true weight. And if they're not true weight, then you may find out that you're not going to use these coins for 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 um, for miser um, um, redemption, and therefore you've used the miser coins in a way that does not really a tzorach mitzvah. Now the thinking was, if you were to find you have these coins that you redeemed on and use other coins, and you find their true weight, you may use them for miser sheni as well. So it's like like candle to candle, that's not the case. The case is, what if I find they're not equal? Then the other coins, the new coins, I will never use for my sashani. So in other words, it has really nothing to do with the, the purpose of, of, of reducing or bizu mitzvah. It has to do with the fact that I may be using something that's really holy for something that's not a holy and it won't be a tzorach mitzvah at all. I'm not sure that I explained it fully well, but it's probably about as good as I can get it across at this point. At any rate, what the Gemara's response is really, it's not considered, it's not considered um, a related kind of question. One is dealing with either Biza Mitzvah or Chushi Mitzvah. This was a certain concern that you may find that you will disqualify the coins altogether when you begin matching them up with other coins itself and you find that one is really not the true weight and then you're really using something that's not at all for servicing Maizashani. It's really servicing and, and for coins that will never come to be used for Maizashani. Okay, so at any rate, bottom line is we're forbidding you for another reason entirely. We're forbidding you for another reason entirely. Okay, so um, that takes up to 9:28. The next qu- next question is going to be a very important question. I'll just maybe introduce it now, and uh, it's about and it's a it's a very long um, question to explain. It's about when they uh, when they went in the midbar, there was a, the, they had the menorah. In the, in the base of Mikdash, and they had it later on. So when they lit the menorah, correct? So the light of the menorah was such that not all of the lights burnt for the same amount of time. One candle burnt the longest, the Ner Ravi. Okay, now which is the Ner Ravi? I'll have to show you next week. I do have a chart, but this Machlokas, which is the Western light. Does the Torah say that all the light has to go to Yes, correct, correct. But in other words, we have this tradition that the actual Ner Ravi, which is either center or the edge, we'll see what that is next week, was a was the one that he started with, and stayed all the way till the end of the night. So when he came in the morning to clean out all the lights, it's the Ner Ravi was still burning. Now this did not always happen. It stopped happening when the Jewish people were not so good. But this was the ideal. Now, at any rate. They had to relight the menorahs for the next night. So when the Ner Ravi went through the entire night, how would, how would he light it? He would take this Ner Ravi that was still burning, take the wick out. I don't know how he would take the wick out while it still was burning, and then light all the new, all the new candles. He only lit it at night. It went out. Oh, he it. In the morning, it went out. No? Except for the Ner Ravi. And it kept burning right to the next night? Until the next morning when they came to clean it. They must have put more oil in it. Well, that, maybe not. No, it's okay. a miracle. 
It's a miracle. Well, if, we, if we don't well, believe in miracles, no, if it's not a miracle, then he must have put more oil in. Right. When but the, the, the issue is the issue is not whether the, the issue is going to be not whether it was a miracle. The issue is really going to be about lighting from one nair right. to the other nair. Right. So it's going to be a whole discussion how it happens, when it happens, so what it looks like, what's going on, how did this take place. So just that you know that where this is going to come out. And the end, by the way, the end is just so that you can. I don't know if you can. I know you know you can't wait till next week. No, no. The end is going to be. Uh, that it's really so there was not a kisum it really he lit it directly from one to the other so it'll be according to the opinion the that you di- directly from one to the other not from not from kisum we're to kisum because we're tilling it with buckets I said we're very complicated but it becomes a real analogy that'll work out so okay we'll stop here and I think this is about